Hey everybody, uh, I'm Jesse. I'm here today with my friend Sohan from West China Tea House. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <And> we're here <laughs> in West China Tea House. We're here Howdy. In West, yeah, because I was like, this is your cue. You know? <laughs> it's great to have tea friends uh, here in the States like Sohan. Sohan spent a lot of time in China. Uh, he's a real tea guy and he runs an actual in-person tea house here in Austin, Texas, where I am today. So thank you so much for hosting me. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to be doing a, a live podcast recording soon. I'm not exactly sure when that's going to come out, but when that does, you guys want to see it. And I thought we would do a new idea for a show that I'm kind of calling Tea Swap. Mm -hmm. So the idea here is that I'm going to pick a tea that I want you to try. You're going to pick a tea that you want me to try. And um, especially with tea people, I'm actually really excited to see what you come up with. Yeah, yeah likewise. Because <laughs> it's going to be, this is exciting for me because there aren't that many people in the States that I'm like, oh, he might have something I really haven't tried before. <laughs> um, so I'm excited. Uh, hopefully you have the same excitement for the tea that I'm bringing. Absolutely. absolutely. So let's get started. What do you want to, what do you want to make me? I'm going to make you a shomei. I'm going to make you okay. a 2016 shomei called okay. Sugar Plum. Okay, let me, hold on, I'm going to break out my, my fancy camera and we can get a close up of this. So yeah, so what is this? This We call this Sugar Plum. It's a 2016 shomei from Fuding mm. made by Li Yan Mei. Mm. It's from 2016. There we go. Beautiful. And so the saying, as you probably heard in mm -hmm. Fuding for aged white tea is one year tea, three years medicine, seven years treasure. Yep. So I, I was going through life thinking that I didn't like white tea. I moved to China. I still didn't think I liked white tea because yep. I lived in Chengdu and they don't really drink white tea there that much. And, uh, and then again, like the, the fancy white tea that you're going to serve people is always going to be silver needle because that's mm. the most expensive yep. one. Even though, and I do like silver needle now. Mm. I'm really picky about it, but mm. I, do, I do appreciate it now. But at the time I was like, yeah. White tea tastes like water yeah. because when I when I worked at the tea shop, Jade Leaves, people would be like, "What's your favorite kind of tea?" And I'd say, "I like all kinds of tea except mm. white tea. <laughs> white tea tastes like water." And I resented pretending that it didn't. So, yeah. well, this is also one of the things where, like, sometimes, like for whatever reason, the most expensive tea is not always to your taste. Right. Like a lot of times, people think like, "Oh, there's if it's expensive, it just must be better." And it's like, well, you know, better for who? You know, if you may not like it, but you shouldn't. And this is something that I always like to tell people. It's like if you had one puar once, don't make that to say like, oh, I don't like puar. Exactly. You know, that's yeah. kind of the, the, the lesson here. So this white tea, it's an aged shomei. How are you going to make it? What are you what are you doing right now with the with the water? With so the I'm just getting everything hot. I'm just going to use boiling hot water. Nice. That's what I like to do for aged white tea. It's from a being. So mm -hmm. I've got a pretty sizable dose for this guy one in here. Yeah. So we're just going to drink some really really be good. strong show me yeah yeah this is something i've noticed like the more you drink with uh people that drink a lot of tea they just kind of like wind up putting more and more and more tea into the guy one mm -hmm. i i kind of have a bad habit of not putting enough in there which is back from my days when i was like just starting in tea <laughs> and i didn't have a lot of tea yeah and then one day i had a uh a epiphany which you may have had as well running a tea house where i'm like oh until I sell this all it's all just like mine right <laughs> like, yeah. like it's, so i can just drink as much as i want <laughs> Getting this high nice. on supply. Mm. Mm, yeah. That's quite nice. Yeah. So I was I was living in Chengdu, and my my roommate Lance introduced me to his friend Yu Shi Hong, who's from mm -hmm. Fujian. Mm -hmm. And he uh, he took us. He worked at a fancy tea house in. Um, mm -hmm. here, I'll give this to Puertas here. Oh, I love him. Yeah. Uh, I so he he was working at a fancy tea house that the the guy that Lance worked for owned. He was serving us tea and he was like serving us the tea house's tea and then he got out a little like just the bing hole mm -hmm. just like the remaining yeah. little bing hole of yeah. like a 2006 by mudan bing which sounds like an insult but it's not it's not it's actually <laughs> like a great it's, thing it's you know it's an amazing thing, thing. Yeah. uh so he, then he's and i i'd never seen pressed white tea before i didn't know mm. white tea could come in beings i'd never mm. heard of aged white tea this is like 2011 2012 mm. or something but i had this experience and um and he served it to me and I loved it. I was like, this is amazing. Where'd you get this? He's like, I got this from my friend who I went to school with. Mm. She lives in Fujian. Here's her WeChat. And so and I this connected is how with it her. actually happens. It's like the, you, like the most precious thing I have as a tea guy is like the WeChat of the tea people. <laughs> Literally. Like, it's like if my phone dies, the business is over. It's over, yeah. If you <laughs> get locked done. out of your WeChat, no, then it's, it's, it's all over. You're done. done. You're done. done, yeah. Well, it's a precious resource because like, and I always tell people, these people mm -hmm. don't have email addresses. No. They don't have websites. Yeah. They're just out there making tea. They're not trying to market to Westerners. Mm -hmm. The fact that we know them is because mm -hmm. of our guanxi mm -hmm. in China that we have the connection, the relationships that we've cultivated, mm. and that is a precious resource, and it's not something that you can just get overnight. You have yeah. to really spend time developing that. Yeah. Like, you lived there for nine years. Yeah. 
Um, so anyways, he served me uh, this aged white tea and I connected with the farmer, Lian Mei, and then, uh, and I, then I went to Fujian, you know, like actually it was maybe like a year later or something. I finally made it to Fujian mm. and I met her and she was, she had a little tea shop in the like the tea mall in Xiamen, mm -hmm. like underground. Mm -hmm. Here, you can do no, it. No, go for it. Just do your thing. Boop, yeah. boop, boop. I'm going to get a shot of the, the yeah. tea color here, which is beautiful. There we go. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for Absolutely. the invitation. Thank you to you guys for watching. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yes. Yeah, the age Shomei is really nice. I think, yeah, if you were if you were going to say like, oh, I thought white tea was water, this would be what you would exactly. show people to show like, no, it's not. Right, it's sweet, it's got like date and honey notes. Um, I love it. And yeah, and the after fragrance is really sweet. And that was what it was like for me, the first time I having an aged white tea with, uh, then I went to, met Lee and May in her shop. And it's interesting, she was, uh, in this little shop in the tea mall, and then catty corner from her was mm. the guy who had a who was a Wu Yuong tea master who roasted mm. Wu Yuong, mm. and they were dating when I met them. Now they're married. They've got two kids. God. When I go over there, yeah, it's like a tea couple. Yeah, they're like a tea power couple, and these kids are going to learn how to make white tea and yen cha, cool. both. Which, which is be that'll really be cool. interesting yep. to see them come out of the same place. I think a lot of people sometimes they, mm -hmm. by the time the tea gets to the West, it's kind of been aggregated by somebody. And we try to do a good job at doing that as the people that are not physically growing the tea. But if you could have knowledge like that within one family, then like, you know, oh, that's yeah. really cool. Huge. It seems like, oh, you can get any tea you want. And it's like, no, unless the family has the knowledge of how to make that tea well, it's not gonna come out good. <laughs> so when you drink this white tea, like what type of person would you recommend for a white tea? You know, it's funny that I always say, like being in a tea house environment, I mm. serve tea to people a lot, like a mm. huge range of different people. And if I'm serving tea at like a party and there's 20 people at the tea table mm -hmm. and I do not have the ability to canvas the, the crowd yeah. and see what kind of tea they want to drink or what mm -hmm. kind of tea they like and make maybe some of them have never done Gongfu Cha before yeah. at all, I'll make aged white tea. Yeah, aged white tea is a good choice because this is, I, I like, um, I have a 2011 fooding on the shop, um, which is a really good aged white tea and they um like one of the benefits of it is that it's light enough to drink as much as you want yeah. but it has good flavor and like that herbal note to it mm -hmm. which again reminds you you're not drinking water <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's robust and it never really gets bitter that's a big one because people can you know people will yeah. boil it people will beautiful. steep it super super long yeah, beautiful color yeah, beautiful like apricot. What's this horse's name? Uh, that's Chonky Horse. Chonky Horse. Yeah, he's, nice. he's a he. Oh Lord, he coming. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I, I I always have this like thing where whenever we come out with a new subscription box, they're all zodiac themed. So every box has a cup and a pet that is along with the zodiac thing. Nice. And I have to be in the position of like months ahead of time planning this, but not revealing the tea pet. Right. Because like everybody wants to like, you know, is thinking what's a tea pack gonna be like for the horse box? What's a tea pack gonna be like for that box? And I'm like, I know that, but I can't tell you. Wow. <laughs> and so uh, a day or two before it launched, um, I was finally doing my last spoilers and I, I have a picture of Chonky Horse up on my hand in front of the skyline of LA and it just, and I just wrote, oh Lord, he coming. <laughs> and it got like a thousand likes. Yeah. Like he, uh, I think that I would say this because a lot of times I think people dislike the internet or internet-y stuff. And for me, it's like, if I had experienced tea as a high culture, you know, formal tea house sit, you know, like that sort of thing, I would feel maybe a little bit less good about writing, no, no, he coming on the thing. But for me, it's like, it's a way of hanging out with friends. Right. You know, it's not a, um, you know, and even in China and lots of places, you go to Fujian, you, you know, you go to Chengdu or whatever, they're not like, sit for tea, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're yeah, like, yeah. hey, come on, sit down. What, what you been up they'll to? They'll like shout at you. They'll be like, yeah. hey, 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 some yeah, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. Have hey, a cigarette, hey, have some tea. Water, water. <laughs> yeah. um, which, you know, so, so for me, it's like, I, I like the balance and I think that there can be a balance, you know? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And and like you're saying that for me, it's the same thing because that's what Chinese people do. That's how mm. they do it. Tea is very down to earth. Mm. It's sophisticated and it's complex mm. and it's well-developed, but it doesn't have to be snobby or elitist. And, and it's not in yeah. China, it's not. Among the people to whom the culture really yeah. authentically belongs, 
they're very down to earth people. And so yeah. I, I love that about your platform that yeah. you convey that because I do feel like there is this impulse to make, to put it up on a pedestal and make it this like Japanese tea ceremony style, yeah. very formal thing, yeah. which is just not the reality. You yeah. know, they're not the reality in China. So yeah, very cool. So thank you so much for this white tea. I'm gonna take one last sip. Absolutely. And then we're gonna move on to my tea and my story for you. And we're gonna switch up spots real fast. Oh, we swapped places. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. It was as fast for us as it was for you. Um, so that was very good. Thank you so much, Sohan, for my the pleasure. white tea. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Um, I have brought a special tea that um, I got on the uh, tea mountains in Yunnan this June. I spent uh, uh, six, seven days up with uh, Ai Jie, Sister Ai, okay. on uh, her mountain in Tianzhajai village, where they claim to have the oldest tea tree in the world. They, they claim that they have a tea tree that's 2,700 years old, which is very old. That's very old. Um, unfortunately, if you don't cut down a tree, you don't know exactly how old it is, and there's no way they're cutting any of that down. But it was way out there. They have, um, they have like a protected nature reserve where the uh, trees are, and they don't, they don't even let like, non-tea farmers up there. <laughs> yeah, reasonably. So, reasonably, reasonably, yeah. Because those trees are like, you know, really, really valuable. Like, Super valuable. I mean, you, almost to the point you can't even value them because like, you know, how much money can I give you to give me a 2,000 year old tree? Right. It's like, it, it doesn't exist. It's older than Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. so, so yeah, and he's old. He's old. Yeah, he's, he's old. old. Um, so his birthday's coming his, up. Yeah, yeah, he was born in zero, right? He was born in zero. So that's so a long time say, ago. Yeah. yeah, so I have a tea that was born 2,000 years later in the year 2000. <laughs> um, so that would make it, uh, that would make it uh, 23 years aged. And uh, I'm gonna show you this, get the uh, extra phone. Did I give you Oh phone? yeah, yeah, here we go. So yeah, take a look at this so we can get some, uh, some pictures of the tea. You don't need to film me, get the tea. Um, so these are, these are the old leaves. Ooh, so yeah. The, um, yeah, so these are leaves from 2000 and uh, the, uh, the tea farmers. Oh, here. I've got I've got a, a, oh, a Sheng Gaiwan for you. Perfect. So this will uh, be this will be excellent. This is the raw puar. So yeah. you have a Gaiwan that's specifically for that. Yeah, that's a Dai Gaiwan. It's made of Dai clay. Oh, I love it. It looks great. And then I'm gonna put that. Yeah, you got there. to use it yesterday when you when you guest yeah. poured. I guess when the, the tea shop. house was created. I'll just put my finger in the yeah. shop. And when the tea house was so created, we Jesse go. stepped in and saved the day. So I'm going to get a couple of these leaves and oh, yeah. stems and twigs and everything. And like a lot of this is because this tea is very very old. This is actually the stuff that they stored for themselves. Oh right. So right. they so it's they, like Huang Pian. Um, it's well, it's it's a little bit of a, actually I don't know what time of year it was picked, but the um, this is what they were drinking all the time amongst themselves in the, uh, at the tea mountain. And so, got a good shot of that. Beautiful. The um, uh, 23 year aged raw puar. I'm gonna add a little bit more even, cause we're with somebody I think who will appreciate it. Oh yeah, I'm here for it. And uh, this was really great because we collaborate with uh, Idea um, to make our Master Box series. So we have a bunch of teas that are I think we do have a 2006 show in there, but most of them are a little bit younger than that because the teas there are really good and really valuable. So the this 23-year uh, age tea was not something I was going to buy because it was too expensive <laughs> even for myself. And then um, on the on the night before we left, uh, you you can stop the uh, the extra filming if you want. No one, to, I'm telling stories. <laughs> uh, no, um, uh, the night before we left, we had like a big kind of goodbye dinner and everybody sung songs. And then I, I do xiangsheng, like the Chinese comedy. So I did a couple xiangsheng guangzhou, <laughs> like, uh, like a little bits. And um, everybody was like a little bit drunk. And um, boom, look at that color. Beautiful. So the, um, yeah. and so everybody was like a little bit tipsy and having a great time. And uh, sister, I asked me, what was your favorite tea you drunk the entire time here on the mountain? And I was like, it was, you know, it was that 23 year uh -huh. age sheng. And she's like, I'll give you a little bag of it. Hey. And so I got that one little red bag. This bag, this, this is, is all the bag. I got. This oh. is all I got. And um, I haven't actually opened it since I got back from the mountain. So you're the first person to be wow. drinking this in the US. I'm very honored. And then so, last time you, we had that, that old white tea. Yeah, that's really nice. Beautiful. So this, um, so they drunk the, the wash over there. Oh yeah, so, I'm, I'm drinking uh, the wash. So we're drinking the sure. wash. If we have a 23 year old tea, we're gonna drink the wash. So cheers. Cheers. Oh, oh yes, very beautiful. Nice. Isn't beautiful. That great? This is this is this is the this is my favorite kind of tea is mm. Shengpuar. Yeah, and I love a good age. Why why do you like it? What what's the good about it? Because I like it. 
<laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I like it because it's good, and it's, it's good to me because I like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, I love the, I feel, I feel like, I, I'm curious if you've noticed this too, like I feel like people get into tea and they get into like Taiwanese oolongs, mm. you know, and these like really fragrant teas, and then mm. they might get into like red tea or like et cetera, shu puar, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then like way down the line, you know, it was like 10 years for me, they end up really gravitating towards sheng puar. Yeah. And it's kind of like you see this someone who's like starts drinking and they're drinking like, hold on. Be a little bit more. Thank you. They're drinking like, you know, wine coolers when they're like 18 years old. And then fast forward like 25 years and they're drinking like single malt scotch with like yeah, a dropper yeah. of water. Ooh, a lot, drop of yeah, water. a dropper of distilled water or something. Whoop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's like, for me, I feel like that's like the Sheng Puar journey is like you get really just, you're just like, it, you're here for the tea. It does seem to be just as all animals evolved to become crabs, all tea drinkers <laughs> evolved to like, like Sheng Puar. <laughs> yeah, it's just um, like that. It yeah. might even be the same phenomenon just on different scales of society. Exactly, and, and I think the reason why, my own guess on it, because this, d describe the taste to people, what are you getting out of it? It's just so hard to describe. You know, I get woody notes, I get like leathery notes, tobacco-y yeah. notes, but, and uh, earthy notes, et cetera. It, it almost to me is like it's got a lot of the flavor of a whiskey with no alcohol, right? But then it also has a lot of flavor of tea. But then it also it just the ability to pack so much flavor into the into the tea without making them confused or one is overpowering or the other thing. And then I don't know if you're feeling it, but I'm already kind That's of right. getting the the chi, the chi, yeah. the energy. Yeah. Um, like you know, this is the the Sheng Puar in general is my get stuff done yeah. tea. And this is like, woo. So Absolutely. I'm Absolutely. gonna be hyped up for the podcast recording. Yeah, that's the real answer. The real answer is because the chi is good. That's yeah, my real answer good. for why I like Sheng Puar. So what, how do you define the chi? How would you explain the chi to people that don't know what that is? The, it's, you know, I feel like the best way to describe it is it's a combination of being stimulated, focused, euphoric, and calm all at the mm. same time. I like and that, that. That's related to the chemicals. You know, there's the caffeine, there's L-theanine, there's theobromine, there's EGCG, and those yeah. all have these, those, those respective, you know, if you're yeah. gonna be very glib and kind of d diminish them to a single feeling, then you can assign those it to is, them. It is really cool because like, even just, I'm, I'm kind of being brought back to the tea mountain right now, uh -huh. physically, because um, like, even just that one little, the two tiny cups of this, and I'm kind of like, I got that like languid, relaxed feeling, yeah. but my head is still not, my head isn't slow. Right. Right? right. Like my body is kind of slow, but my head isn't slow. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, you know, one day, uh, one of my goals is maybe in 2024, I'm making like a bunch of plans now because it's getting to that time of year, is to come out with like a rare tea sampler mm -hmm. because like I definitely couldn't afford to sell a bag or a cake of this sort of stuff, but like 10 grams might be doable. So this yeah. is always why I'm always hoping, uh, you know, if you like tea, support your tea people. Um, you know, it's it's a good way of uh, making tea more accessible to everybody. Absolutely. You know. So one last, um, uh, like, you know, tasting, so to speak, of, of this tea. And it's a little unfortunate. I want to save it because we can get probably another 16 steeps out of that. It. Yeah, <laughs> you can save it. We can bring it up to the front and they can, they can start pouring it. Bring it out to the front. That would be a good idea and give people a real treat. The, um, so uh, when you're looking to say like, this is a good tea, what are you looking for? I'm looking for a tea that can steep multiple times. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's what I would say is like, it doesn't matter if it tastes good. If you only get two steepings out of it and then it's done, it's, the Chinese wouldn't consider it a good tea. Yeah. It's gotta be clean and it's gotta taste clean. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very, you know, I spend a lot of time tasting tea to see how clean it is and, mm -hmm. and see the effects. And you know, I was saying this earlier, you buy a conventional vegetable and you wash it off. Mm -hmm. And then you're supposed to try and wash off the chemicals. So you buy a tea that's got pesticides, you wash it off and then you drink the water that you washed it in. And so. Yeah. There's no, there's no hiding, you know, there's no hiding from chemicals in tea. There's no hiding yeah. from pesticides, herbicides in tea. And I really believe you can't make a good tea using those. So that's the first yeah. thing as a sourcer, that's what I'm looking yeah. at. And then when I'm like, do I like this tea? Cause that's my metric. Yeah. Are we going to sell this tea? Well, would I buy this tea from us? If I was, if it cost as much mm -hmm. as we would charge for it, yeah. if I bought it at that price, as a tea drinker and drank it, yeah. would I be stoked or would yeah. I feel disappointed? Yeah. If I, you know. And that's a good metric because, like, that's you know, I have a subscription box every three months. They come out with three new teas, and uh, you know, it's one of those things where, like, because I'm going to be making videos, I need to be drinking these teas a lot. You know, so it's like the the tea people say it's like you know. I remember a tea one of my tea people in China put it this way to me. He's like, well, if you're selling it, you can sell good tea or bad tea. 
but whatever you sell, you're gonna drink every day. Yeah. So do you wanna drink bad tea every day? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I no, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so like, it has to be good enough that I'd be willing to drink it basically every day. Yeah. But yeah, the last things I'd say uh, that I look for in a good tea is the, you know, the more subtle aspects, the hui gan, the mm. hui yin, the yeah. cha chi, these mm. more subtle aspects like the, the aftertaste and the feeling in the throat mm -hmm. and the, the, like the fragrance of the empty cup, yeah. those subtle things I find. And then having the character of being chuen, I was yep. thinking about this earlier when we were talking about yep. what does it taste like? All the flavors are kind of united. Yep. That's that word in Chinese mm. that we don't have in English. Chuen. Yeah, I was trying to translate it as like, um, it's not a great translation. I, I have a tea cake on the site that's it's called Bingdao Chun. Bingdao uh -huh. is the area of uh, Yunnan where the tea comes from, and Chun is that that we translate as mellow, which is not really mellow. Um, but that tea is mellow, so it kind of works. Mm -hmm. But it's like I remember looking up in my Pleco dictionary. It was yeah, like you know okay. the smoothness of a fine wine. I'm like that's not really helpful for right, <laughs> for right. a Shopify uh, product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like yeah. it's, it's the the character has the wine radical in it, and it's really it's yeah. it's a it's a the, it comes from the taste of like a wine that's been aging in a ceramic jar for many years, mm -hmm. and the flavor has gotten like mellow but also that you know I was describing it as like when you've got like a like a stew or like a gumbo or something like that and you've got it like three days later it's better than the first day because mm. all the flavors have melded together mm. and it's almost the opposite of like in wine culture you want to be able to pull out these distinct notes but in in tea culture this quality of being chun is highly desirable mm -hmm. people like that about it and if it's if it is very chun then it's going to be harder to distinguish those notes from each other. They're really going to have melded into one. And mm -hmm. so that's something I like about a nice aged yeah. tea like this is that it, it this is aged. It has that character of having the flavors melded and unified together. Mm -hmm. And it does make it trickier to say like, oh, this has red fruit or, yeah. you know, crushed granite, you know, something yeah. like that. I don't necessarily think about those tasting notes, but mm -hmm. it has this overall yeah. impact. And so that's something that I look for is the holistic experience, the chi, twin, the huigan, all of these different things that are not exactly just tastes and smells are what really draws me to a tea. Very cool. Well, thank you again, Sohan, so much for, for inviting me over here. We're going to be doing our podcast recording shortly. Uh, it's been great to be able to share some good tea. Lobochido. 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 Yep. Lobo is cha, chi mm. is bei, and mm. do is he. Oh, yeah. yeah. So drink a cup of tea. Bei cha. Bei cha. There we go. So thank you all so much for watching. Um, I don't unfortunately have this 23 year aged uh, um, IGST up on the shop, but I do have the Master Box series, all of which come from her tea mountain. Those are really good and a little bit more accessible for people. And if you think the rare tea sampler is a good idea, put it in the comments as well, because it definitely, I feel much better you know, as you were talking about investing the money, if I have like feedback that yeah. people actually want it, that makes me feel a lot better saying, okay, now I can trust my own opinion on right, this. Right, you right, know? right, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's great. And um, yeah, I just hope you guys have a good time and drink more tea and uh, hang out with some fun people. Uh, I'm Jesse. I'm Sohan. There we go, he picked it up this time. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> have a good one, guys, here we go.